All right, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jordan Przinski, and I serve as the Director of Membership with Good Business Colorado. Uh, Good Business Colorado is a grassroots organization of values-driven businesses, uh, rejecting partisanship and advocating for a prosperous economy. This is being recorded live, please don't. And a sustainable environment. Um, uh, uh, our members believe that business success cannot be measured um, by profit alone and that success means that our planet, communities, and bottom lines are all thriving. Um, before we get started today, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our amazing partner organizations for today's events. Uh, the Alliance Center, Be Local Colorado, the Center for Community Wealth Building, the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Boulder County, the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Pueblo, um, Sista Biz Global Network, Small Business Majority, Startup Colorado, and the Longmont Sustainable Business Program. Um, after today's event, um, you'll receive a follow-up email with more information about each of these amazing partners. Um, it'll also contain a link to a survey. So if you wouldn't mind taking a couple of minutes to um, fill out that survey and provide your feedback, we would certainly appreciate it. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Karen Moldovan, our uh, Director of Policy here at Good Business Colorado, to get us started. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. We've got a great panel and a lot of content to get through. So I just wanted to quickly let folks know that we will be using the chat box for Q&A. All of our attendees uh, should be muted, but if you have questions as we're hearing from our panelists and going through this content, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat box and we're gonna hold some time at the end so we can have a little bit of a discussion. I'll be um, sharing some of the questions. So um, just wanted to be sure folks know to do that. And I am just gonna go ahead and turn it right over to Representative Tracy Craft Tharp. She's been a really strong advocate for small businesses and navigating uh, sales tax remittance. So she's gonna give a little bit of background about her work and how the legislature um, helps with this issue. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, everybody. Um, really appreciate everybody joining us. This is a pretty important topic. So the state legislature has really uh, dived into our streamlining sales tax work over the last five years. I've served as the chair of the um, Sales and Use Tax Streamlining Committee. I also represent Colorado on the national uh, uh, streamlining sales tax um, uh, uh, task force. So really have a sense around what's happening in other states. It is true that Colorado has the most convoluted and complicated sales tax system in the country. And the reason why is because of all of our strengths. We believe in local control. We believe that the state shouldn't tell you what to do. We believe that every community is unique and we need to serve them in unique ways. And so part of that is, is we have home rural cities and we have some cities that are working with the state and everybody has a sense around what their needs are for their, their sales tax. In this work, it's been really important that we are understanding both sides of this issue. So, you know, business has been struggling with this for a very long time. It is very cumbersome to comply with Colorado sales tax regulations. Um, it takes, um, they, uh, the, uh, um, they say that it takes uh, American Furniture Warehouse a day and a half every month to be able to comply with their sales tax um, remittals. A day and a half for a big, huge corporation. Just think about the small businesses. So we wanna rectify that, we wanna streamline that, we wanna take care of that. So why don't we just do it? Why don't we just make one sales tax throughout the state? The legislature certainly has thought of that. The reason why we don't is because of the complexities for our local municipalities that local municipalities, for most of them, sales tax is the only revenue stream that they have coming in. If we set a state rate and it's lower than what they currently have, that's money that they do not have. That's people that they have to cut services to their local municipalities that they have to um, curtail. If we set a sales tax rate that's higher than what they have, that's additional revenue that comes in. Colorado's a Tabor state. They have to go to a vote of the people to be able to get approval of that. So I think it's important to understand the both sides of it, to understand the complexities and how the state has tried to address that. So over the years, we've tried to take little bites around the, the edges. Really want to commend County Commissioner Kathleen uh, Conti, who was one of the first premier legislators who uh, was working on this issue. 
and uh, she really deserves a lot of the credit. So we started taking a lot of little bites around the edges, like changing the surety bond regulations when people don't pay their sales tax on time and they don't pay the, the proper amount. Looking at um, uh, that everybody, um, streamlining the definitions, that everybody is working on the same definitions. And we passed a resolution on that in 2015, asking that all the municipalities work on that. Lots of hard work around that. Um, there continues to be hard work around that because that's a complicated issue. Then um, after 2015, there was conversations around, do we want to keep taking little bites around the edges or do we want to have a place where we can talk about this in a comprehensive manner? Talk about this long term. And so the legislature passed the Sales and Use Tax task, Streamlining Task Force and in which we pulled together members of the community business uh, folks, local municipality folks, county folks, and legislators to be able to look at this long term. And through that process, we've been able to pass some legislation. So first of all, we passed legislation to look at um, uh, what is the problem and what could the possible solutions be. So we did uh, 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 a referral for, uh, of interest. I'm not getting that right, Jen, but Jen will pick up on, on me. And to look at who's out there, who's doing this work, is there the availability to be for the state to be able to put together a comprehensive system? And then the next year, we put together a bill saying, okay, we are gonna do a referral process. We are going to go out there and develop a database to be able to look at a streamlined system. There's two ways of conquering this issue, and then I'll wind up, Karen. One is you could change the sales tax rate. And as I said, there's a lot of complexities and um, around why we can't do that. But the other avenue, the other pathway which we chose to do is that you could change the process of how you remit sales tax. And so that's the avenue that Colorado is taking. And Jen, I think is gonna talk a little more specifically around some of the legislation we did. So thank you very much. I really appreciate being part of this. Um, this is very exciting to see this work coming to um, culmination and to see um, Colorado really benefiting from the, the, all the people that have been invested in this. So thanks, Karen. Thanks so much. That was that was really helpful, and we are so appreciative of all your advocacy work, Representative. Um, and so, yeah, next, Jen Penn with the Simplify Colorado Sales Tax Coalition is going to talk some about the coalition work that that got us the legislation and helped get us here. Thank you, thank you, Karen, and thank you so much, Representative Kraftharp. We have enjoyed working with you so much, and you have truly been a champion for sales and use tax uh, simplification in the state of Colorado, and we truly appreciate it. Um, so a little bit about our coalition. Um, so I'm Jen Penn, I'm a contract lobbyist, and one of my clients is Simplify Colorado Sales and Use Tax Coalition, um, and I'll put our uh, website in the chat, but the coalition was started in 2015, and the mission of the coalition is to reform Colorado's excessively complex sales and use tax system with multiple goals. Um, and that is truly around fairness, simplicity, and pr predictability for businesses. Um, revenue neutrality for our um, municipalities, um, you know, leading in what Representative Kraft Tharp talked about and Colorado having a complicated sales and use tax system, but, you know, having that revenue neutrality to avoid, to avoid adverse impacts on our local and state public services. And then third, creating a competitive economic environment for the state of Colorado that will continue to attract employers to our state. Um, so over the course of the last five or so years, uh, we have worked with the state legislature and legislative champions like Representative Kraft Tharp on numerous pieces of legislation, um, many that Representative Kraft Tharp has already mentioned, so I won't um, continue to talk about those, but we did work on the creation of the Legislative Simplification Task Force, um, and that task force that Representative Kraft Tharp already talked about has really you know, created an opportunity for the state of Colorado to have a really um, comprehensive and collaborative conversation about how do we 
continue to simplify sales and use tax in the state of Colorado, um, which has really gotten us to where we are today and the conversation that we're having today and the suits system and the demonstration that y'all are about to see. So um, the legislation on the that task force was passed in 2017 for three years. And then we just passed legislation, this past legislative session in 2020 to extend that task force for another five years. So that task force um, will start meeting after the next legislative session. So um, in the interim of 2021, and there are several um, goals outlined in that bill that we will continue to look at. Um, I'll name a couple of them. So simplifying various um, licenses from business and sales and use tax licenses um, throughout the state and how we might be able to look at feasible solutions. Again, with our county, city, municipal partners, state partners and everybody at the table having a comprehensive collaborative conversation about that. Um, use tax and state um, having a conversation about state definitions. We've already have um, the um, the other definitions project. So, and lots more that are outlined in that legislation. So for details on that, please see um, House Bill 20-1022. Um, we'll also be hearing from our partners at the state from the Office of, of Information Technology and Department of Revenue regularly at those task force meetings. So uh, we'll continue to work on simplifying sales and use tax through that task force. So that will really be um, the future and, and drive some future legislation and conversations around our, our efforts. So if you're interested in learning more about Simplify Colorado Sales and Use Tax Coalition, please go to our website. Um, please send me an email. I think our sign up is not working at the moment. I apologize. I am working on fixing it. Um, so send me an email um, through the info uh, website address that's on our website and I will get you added to our email list and we will send you updates as they continue to happen. And um, that's kind of my update. So thank you all. Awesome, that's super helpful. There's been so much work between um, between the two of you. So we really appreciate it. Um, I think where I'm, I'm hoping we can spend some time is I'm gonna turn it over to the folks from Department of Revenue. So we've got uh, Stephen, Conan and Aaron. Um, Conan and Aaron are working closely with the department that are actually gonna be able to uh, talk a little bit about how the state agency has stepped in and what the new system looks like. So we're gonna be able to share some screens and do some demonstrations so business owners can actually see what this process is going to look like, how to sign up, how to navigate um, this whole new system. Um, so they're gonna fill us in about everything they've been doing and then we would really love folks to um, share your questions and experiences. So I will turn it over to Steven first. Thank you, Karen. Um, just give me a moment here to share my screen and we'll get started. And let me know when you guys can see my screen. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Magina, and it's an honor to present Scuts to Good Business Colorado. For reference, I served as the project manager for Cell and Use Tax System during its creation and implementation. Today, I serve as the product owner for Scuts at the Colorado Department of Revenue. Now, the question is, what is the primary intent of SETS? Sales and use tax software system is a single web portal where businesses could both look up sales and use tax information and file and remit to all jurisdictions at once. The important understanding here is that it must be both simple and easy. The solutions had to be cut through complexity, create a process that draws user through the system intuitively and quickly. Sutz met that challenge and it's received positive feedback. Now, why does this matter? Ease of use for businesses because it provides a one-stop shop to register, file, and pay. It allows for economic nexus, allowing Colorado to require the collection of out-of-state businesses to collect sales tax. One of the most important aspects of the SUS solution is to allow Colorado to secure the tax revenue that was not available in the past 
due to the complex taxation landscape. It just could not be do, done manually. So again, SUTS has made this a non-issue and it's met its challenge. It also created a tax source of truth for the tax data. Before SUTS, there was a looming concern that the business owners were using the correct tax. With SUTS, it's now the source of truth where a business owner could confidently check to see what the correct sales tax is and it could be, just, it could be done in seconds. Now here are the steps that a business owner would see. And this is what, I'm gonna walk you through the steps for each one of these. So step number one, once a business owner goes to the SUTS portal or the, the website, they're gonna register. Step two, they're gonna upload their tax remittance. Step three, they're gonna verify and sign the return. Four, make a single payment through SUTS. Five, taxpayer payment clears, and six, SUTS delivers payment and tax form to all jurisdictions. Now, what is the timeline for SUTS? SUTS, launch, SUTS launched on May 6th, and it's available for all businesses to join. Once CDOR triggers business compliance, all businesses must comply within 90 days. The timing of that business compliance is still being reviewed by the Department of Revenue. Now, how many businesses have registered on SUTS? Currently, we have 211 businesses that are registered and 16 are filing returns. You may ask, how many home rules are on the SUTS system? Well, 32% are under review, 21% are pending signatures, and 45% are on SUTS. Now, out of that 45%, that translates to about 32 home rules that are on SUTS today out of 71. And out of those top 20 cities, we have Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, Pueblo, Longmont, and Loveland. And we, all have, we also have some more home rules coming on next month. Now, how is SUTS being tracked? There is a public site that Colorado Municipal League has all the data and up and current information on which home rules have already come on board and which ones are, are being onboarded. And that link is being provided in chat as we speak. Now, for those business owners that have questions about you know, registration or technical questions. We also have a specific hotline where we have people that are gonna be ready to answer those questions about SUTS. And lastly, there is a second uh, frequently asked questions link that's being provided right now in chat that will allow business owners to see what common questions have come up. And also that link is gonna walk you through a video of how to register on SUTS. And at this time, we're gonna go ahead and start that SUTS demo. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna turn it over to Erin. Thanks, Steven. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna do a little um, intro here, just in PowerPoint about MuniRevs. So MuniRevs provides the re remittance and payment system for the SUTS program. So what uh, MuniRevs does is for the past decade, we've been making sales tax and use tax easier for jurisdictions just all over the country. We serve communities in 15 different states and we do provide a single filing uh, portal like we are here in Colorado and the state of Alaska as well. So what happens in the SUT system is that there is a single registration process, meaning that a business can register confirming all of their CDOR account numbers, but then also all of the participating home rule account numbers within the system. It also allows in that registration process for a business such as a remote seller that may not yet have an account number with one of the local home rule municipalities to go ahead and still file within our system without having to go and communicate with each one of the home rules separately. So it's a really great time saver for that licensing and account number maintenance that, um, that was mentioned before. Once the business has registered, they can go ahead and file their sales and use tax through the system. 
they can make a single payment. And again, that's for the state plus all of the home rule cities. And the system doesn't dictate that the business needs to do both. So if a business finds it more helpful to just file their home rule cities through SETS and continue to file through revenue online for their state filings, they can certainly do that, vice versa, or they can do it all together. We try to make it as flexible as possible so businesses can choose the best way that suits their business process. And then the final uh, offering that we have here is that we uh, directly send all of the file returns over to the Department of Revenue so that those can be processed in their system of record. I'll walk you through the system here in a minute and show you the registration page that we have. Uh, you can also get over to the, the TTR tax lookup system right from within the portal. Um, and we'll walk through all of the tools there for FAQ and videos just to make it as easy as possible for our businesses to register and file. Once you've uploaded your tax return, I've got an example on the screen here. Essentially what we do is we allow the business to confirm all of those jurisdictions and all of those filings all in a really single, easy to use process so that they, they can go ahead and confirm the amount, remit their payment and move on. Um, given that there's over 300 jurisdictions at the CDOR level and 71 home rule cities, we wanted to make that interface to confirm their filing just as easy as possible. A question that we often receive is whether the system handles the unique rules for each of the home rule cities um, within the system, and it absolutely does. So for every single jurisdiction, whether they are a statutory or state collected system, or excuse me, city, or a locally administered one, the system honors their penalty rate, their vendor fee rate, their interest rate, their tax rates, so that for the business, it's all automatically calculated without needing to reconfirm all that information, and the jurisdiction benefits from maintaining their rules at their home rule level of authority. Once the business has filed and the funds have been received in the trust account that's attached to the SUT system, our system generates a universal sales and use tax return that the home rule cities then accept. So uh, they can then log into the system or we, we have certain direct integrations that we can send them electronically to cities. They all accept the same format, much like what you see on the screen here. And so any businesses that were part of that day's deposit will be listed there as part of the payment we sent over to that jurisdiction. And then we're also able to track the receipts um, and when they got transmitted that the funds were good and received by the city and just make sure that those taxpayer monies are all tracked all the way through to the jurisdiction. So let's go into the system here now. Um, you can go into the system at colorado.minirevs.com. I believe that link was also provided uh, during Stephen's presentation. On our login page, there's immediately a really quick video to show you how you can go ahead and go through the registration process. We also have quick links on the side here that talks about how the system is used and how you can go ahead and get started with text instructions that follow much like the process of the video we provide. Bulk filers can utilize the system much like they might do with a, um, the Streamline Sales Tax Initiative. So uh, for instance, the XML filing schema is very similar to what the other states that participate in the Streamline Sales Tax Initiative utilize. And we provide a full testing area for those bulk filers so that they can use the system for their clients. We keep the participating jurisdiction list current as jurisdictions go ahead and sign up with the system. And you can always get there from that link on the page before. Um, and so you can see here, as Stephen said, uh, we're at about 45% of the home rule cities that are currently participating. Um, I believe our estimates are that we'll be at about 70% by mid to late November. Um, and of course, we're working toward that full participation, working with the home rule cities all the time on that. The FAQs are available right here from the registration page as well. And then, of course, a link over to the tax rate lookup tool that Conan will show you next. To go ahead and get started, you're going to go ahead and log in or register with the system. I'm going to go ahead and log in because I'm already a user. We do have all the state security uh, features here in the system. We need all of the OIT requirements, including, as you can see, the recapture verification to make sure all the data is fully secured within the system. And then this would be what your business center looks like once you register. Any business that you're attached to will show here. Um, and so those bulk filers I mentioned, they can manage all their clients with a single login right here in the system. And then we can present 
messages to the taxpayers as they arise. So for instance, uh, the, the state is doing some uh, firewall and uh, server backups uh, updates in October. So we make it very clear here so that when the business owner logs in, they know when those outage days might be. Um, and then as you come over here, here's all the quick links to help you get started even further once you register. So what you would do here is uh, you can get to that FAQ page I showed on the registration here. For the businesses that are filing just one business at a time, they'll use our Excel upload format. When you click in here, you're gonna see all the instructions here. We have videos that accompany this, as well as step-by-step -step text and visual instructions to make it as easy as possible for you. And then again, those bulk filers that I mentioned before, they could use the XML format. Um, and when they go in here, they have a full testing area to test their programming from their export system to make sure that it will all match what we need in here in the subsystem. And that completes the, the orientation here from the, the single, or excuse me, from the business portal. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those as well. I'll turn it over, I believe, to Conan and happy to answer questions as they come up. Right. Hello, everybody. My name is Conan Royce. I work with TTR um, for uh, 11 years now, and we've been working for a long time on uh, what is what underlies what I'm about to show you, which is our rooftop rates or our right rates program. It, it allows us to pinpoint with pinpoint accuracy, identify what is uh, where's the location and what tax rate applies. I'll go ahead and share my screen so you can see what that looks like for Colorado. And what your, are you all able to see my screen? Okay, great. All right, so what you're looking at is the homepage. Um, when you arrive, it's a, um, similar to the colorado.munirevs.services. Uh, um, this is colorado.ttr.services. And that is, um, this is live, it's available. Um, so you can go to this on your home computer or your work computer. Um, we tried to make this as easy as possible, as simple as possible. The, the lookup is very much like Google Maps, very much like a Google search. You can type anything you would normally search in, uh, in Google Maps in here. So in this case, I'm just going to type in Denver. And what it's going to do is just like Google Maps, it's going to bring me to a map. Uh, it's going to go into the center of Denver. I can use all the bells and whistles that Google Maps has. I can scroll out, scroll in. I can even go down to this, the street view and see what building we're talking about. We, I can also use the map itself to find the location. Um, I can click on any of the icons and the system is gonna adjust to that specific location giving you the address that's most applicable to that pinpoint. And I can also just select anywhere on the map. Um, so let's say I, I live at uh, this house here and I wanna find out what's the tax rate right here. It's gonna tell me what is that address. It's gonna give me a latitude longitude and it's gonna give me the jurisdiction code, the rate breakdown, the, the rate total, and then the rate breakdown that applies for that exact location. We've got a number of um, different things available um, up here. There are two videos, two training videos, just to kind of walk through what this system does, how it works and so forth. There's a, a visual walkthrough here. There's a link to the Mini Revs portal that um, Aaron just was showing you. Right here behind this button, we've got a whole bunch of different products and services that are represented. So here in Denver, uh, we, we default to general merchandise, but there's, four, there's 344 different items. Um, and for example, if you're doing, if you're preparing, if you're a restaurant preparing or going to a restaurant to find out, um, in order to find out the rate for a restaurant, it, the system's gonna adjust to uh, accommodate. So in this case, the city rate changes from 4.31 um, to 4% for prepared food. Let me go back to general merchandise. And as you can see, it'll adjust accordingly. There's a few additional bells and whistles. Um, if you wanna look at a past effective date or a future effective date, you can click on 
this icon and you can go forward. So let's say we wanted to see what, you know, what rates are going to uh, be available or going to be changing January 1st. You can click on that. There's another overview here, which is just kind of a written overview of the system. If a user has a question, then they can click on the question button and it'll pull up a dialogue box that you can send to the Department of Revenue, Department of Taxpayer Services. And then finally, depending on whatever product or service I've got selected, let's say I choose gas and electricity for residential use, I can export anything. It's gonna grab the location, the jurisdiction code, the product or service type, and the tax rate breakdown and put a date on it so that you can save that or you can forward that as needed. Hopefully this appears simple to you. Um, we've tried to, again, make it as simple as possible. Uh, wherever you either click on the map or type in an address, it's gonna adjust. If I select something outside of Denver, as an example, it's gonna change the jurisdiction code. It's gonna change the rate breakdown accordingly. In addition to the rate lookup, um, we have an available API connection, which allows businesses to connect directly to this lookup um, programmatically. So you can send over information to our system and it'll give you back the, the rate and the rate breakdown information um, through that connection. In addition to this lookup, we've built an, a, a tool that allows home rules and state administered jurisdictions to seamlessly and easily update or annexations, um, new, uh, boundary changes, rates, or taxability changes, and make it a, a, something that's as simple as possible to keep up to date. So uh, just a quick overview of that. Here are boundaries. I've selected Denver. Here's Denver's sales, uh, sales and use tax rates. These are all the taxability items that were shown in that tool. And if Denver wants to make any changes to these, it's pretty simple. They can just click on one of the taxability items, click propose a change, drag and drop the information, type in a plain English explanation of the difference, include any ordinances and so forth and send it off. And what the system does is it keeps the DOR, Muni Revs and TTR and the home rules all coordinated so that there's a very quick and easy method for keeping all of this information up to date. This lookup system is different from past systems in that it's not address driven. It's actually switches an address to a pinpoint on a map. And by changing to a pinpoint on a map and making sure you've got the correct boundaries, rates, and taxability, you can ensure that no matter where you select in Colorado, you can get the correct rate at that location. So hopefully that looks and feels simple. And that's, uh, that has been the goal. And like Aaron, I'm willing to take any questions um, later on in the Q&A. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, that was so great to be able to, to see the interface. So we do have a few questions popping up and we have uh, some time. So I would tell folks, uh, feel free to use the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, I've got them both open. Um, so there, there's a few questions I see Stephen has been answering some as we're going along, but, but just to make sure folks are really clear, wanting to know, you know, can they, still use is this replacing colorado.gov backslash revenue online or um should they still use this or is the set system replacing it how are those two different are the urls interfacing steven i don't know if you want me to take that um but i can jump in so it is it is an alternative so um one of the things that we understood in the legislation all this time was that we wanted it to be optional for businesses and for home rules um, because we wanted to make sure that we still meet the needs of both of those stakeholders um, whichever makes sense for them so a business can still absolutely file in revenue online um, they can use sets just for their home rule city filing they can use sets for just their state filing or they can use for both so it's really up to the best needs of the business Thank you. So I think there were two or three questions about that. Um, if folks still have additional questions, feel free to, to let us know and we can, we can dig into that a little bit more. Um, another question, how far back in time can you see tax rates? 
A great question. Currently, that is to the soft launch date, which is May. So it'll have the, the prior to July 1st rates and the after July 1st rates. Um, there is a plan to extend that further back, uh, but that's uh, at a later date. Got it. So I'm taking a look and at this time, I don't see any other questions, which is really shocking to me um, because I think there's, I know folks have, have really been struggling with this issue for years. Um, so I don't know if, if folks um, have any feedback that you want to share via the chat box around kind of what you saw from the demonstration, um, you know, meeting the criteria of being simple and easy to navigate. Um, there is another question that just came up about when, when do you all expect the launch date? I know that's a, a popular question these days. So, so I'll take that question. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. So, um, yes, that, that's a popular question, as everybody knows, but um, that date is still to be determined. Um, we are expecting more home rules to come on board. So when we've hit a certain number of home rules, then we will determine that, and that date's going to be determined by the Department of Revenue. Great. So it sounds like a little uh, still to be determined, but I think at Good Business Colorado, we will also uh, be putting information out to our members as well as um, I'm quite sure the Simplify Sales Tax Coalition will do the same. Um, so folks are, are up to date on the launch. Um, so just an additional clarifying question um, pertaining to the earlier question. Folks just want us to clarify that they can continue to do that it's their choice. They can continue to do what they've been doing or they can change to SUTs. Um, it's kind of depending on what they feel like is the, the most helpful for their business. Is that, can we affirm that's correct? Absolutely, it's optional. Um, another question, if you sell a mix of products like food or general merchandise, does the TTR system compile the various tax rates of businesses? Through the API connection, you would be able to, basically it would, you would, I'm not a technical person, so I'm not gonna explain this very well. So, <laughs> so I apologize ahead of time. But uh, through the API, you're able to break down what, um, what product or service type it is and get back the rate appropriate to that product or service type. So yes, in essence, you can break it down and have the, rate, uh, the rates appropriate for the specific product service types. So we have a question um, and I'll just read it. It says, I've been using SUTs instead of the SOVOS so as it is so much better, but file and pay taxes on revenue online. Is this a problem? So how are you using SUTs? I guess that would be the return question. Are you using SUTs just for your home rule filings then? Or are you using SUTs just to get your account numbers and your templates figured out because we have all that in there? I guess that would be a follow-up question. We don't have the response quite yet. Um, but it, so it does seem though that, that SUTs could be the one-stop shop essentially for all of it, that, that the user would not need to be going back and forth. There's the functionality to do all of it through SUTs. Absolutely. So basically what SUTs does is we allow the business to file all of their fi filings um, in that single system and then we connect to all of the systems of record. So the state still uses revenue online, of course, and businesses that maybe don't have multiple jurisdictions um, like the businesses that maybe need that solution may continue to file in revenue online. So what the SUT system does is every time a tax return comes through the system, we go out and we transmit that data to each of those unique systems, whether it's the state's revenue online system or the city of Englewood system of record, whatever system they use so that the business doesn't need to go and transmit individually to all those. We can be the, the kind of the central point where we're going to get the data to everybody and, and the remittance to everybody. That's really helpful. Thank you. I actually just got a message uh, via text. So they're coming from everywhere. <laughs> but this one says, um, regarding the public access, does the public have access to, st to SUTs before the launch date? They're curious to see what Adams and Commerce City looks like in particular. 
So we're in a soft launch right now. Like Stephen said, the state hasn't officially done um, an announcement yet because we're looking for a higher or 100% home rule participation first. Um, but we are in a soft launch. And so you can absolutely go to colorado.minirevs.com. You can register. You can access all of the tax rate information um, through TTR, right through your SUTS portal. Um, you can go ahead and, and confirm and, and kind of get through that registration process. And you can absolutely start filing um, if you would like to as well. It, it's definitely um, live for an, a, a soft launch. It's just that we're not doing the full announcement and public releases and everything until we have a higher percentage of those homes. Awesome. Thank I just wanted you. to add something real quick. Yeah. Um, also, for anybody that wants to know where we're at with home rules and who's been on board or being onboarded, they can go to that CML site that I presented in my presentation. So that's definitely public. Everybody can go on there and see that. Thank you. A couple other questions coming in. Is there a way to do a bulk lookup of addresses in TTR? Um, there, that is something that we've entertained as making um, generally available. You can do um, the lookup through the API connection. Um, that would just require, you know, if, if you have a programming team or something like that to set up that connection, um, then you're able to send you know, each individual address in through that API. We can also do that on our side internally. So if there's something that you have an immediate need for, um, please reach out to TTR and we can help you out with that. Um, but yeah, that, that, that may be something that becomes available as uh, in a future um, iteration or version. Thank you. Um, another question, can an individual access the tax rates? Uh, yeah, just as uh, Aaron said, the TTR lookup site is is live. Um, however, the SUT system is, as again, as she mentioned, is in a soft launch. So it's not been generally publicized. It's not posted on the, the DOR webs, uh, website because as soon as we do make that fully official, then all businesses will be required to, within 90 days, start collecting and remitting. And we want to uh, you know, we want to get more um, more of the home rule cities onboarded and set up in SUTs. So, um, however, there is the link that was provided uh, by Jordan earlier. Uh, Colorado.ttr.services is live and it is able to be accessed. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions from folks? I think we might have just had a few more pop in. Um, let's see. So this one says, I've been using SUTS, or I guess TTR, uh, to find out jurisdiction codes and boundaries to where we are delivering. So I know the taxing areas, but so far have continued to file and pay taxes through revenue online. So that was the answer to our earlier question, just sort of clarifying how they're using both. Um, so I don't know if folks have feedback on, on that um, response in particular. Yeah, I mean, just like we were saying before about how the remittance side, you can kind of pick and choose what the best way is for your business. Conan, absolutely, right? They should use the TTR resource. Um, if they're not going to use the remittance system, they can kind of pick and choose between those solutions as well. Absolutely. You know, the TTR resource is available. Um, the mini revs resource is available. Uh, the, the purpose of this is to try and simplify things where if you're filing with many home rules, currently, you know, you probably are filing with multiple home rules and the state. If you're only filing with the state right now, you can continue to do that, not a problem. So it, it does seem like there's still a little bit con of confusion around the different sites, but, um, you know, and when um, folks should use revenue online versus, versus this. So I got another question about it. Um, so it, it sounds like those SUTs is intended to be a one-stop shop. So folks don't have to go back and forth. Um, if, if folks feel like they need to or they can, they have that choice, but everything should be able to be done through SUTs. That's correct. Okay. Um, I so- I want to clarify, I'm sorry to okay. interrupt. No, it, please. SUTs um, has launched, it just hasn't triggered the business compliance yet. So um, it is up and running and everybody can go on that site and start using it if they want to. So another follow-up question on that. So after the launch, um, you know, will the system still be optional or will there be like a penalty for not coming on board with SUTS in that 90-day window? 
Right now, um, that window hasn't been triggered, but after it's triggered, after the 90 days is put in place, um, then there will be some type of um, penalty in that sense. And we'll be releasing more information on that uh, just to be a little bit more clear on what that's going to look like. That's also to be determined. So yeah, there's been a couple comments, just, you know, what does that mean? Not sure about the business compliance piece. So it seems like there's a little bit of confusion on that. Uh, uh, Representative Kraftharp, did you have a comment or did anybody else want to weigh in on this component? I'm wondering if Stephen could clarify that um, around what that means, because um, the way that he said it, it sounds like businesses are required to use um, the sales and use tax system which is not the case and that you will be penalized if you were not doing it. So Stephen, could you clarify that? Definitely, sorry about that. So right now the business compliance has not been triggered for businesses to start using it. Once we trigger the 90 days, then we definitely want businesses to go on there and start using such just because such was created for business owners. It was also created to make things more simple and easy for everybody to go on there and use. Stephen, I think further clarification on that might be um, in relationship to if a business is already collecting and remitting to all jurisdictions, they're still gonna be able to use revenue online and keep doing what they are doing now if they're collecting you know, across the boards anyway. Yeah, go ahead, Jen. Hi. So I think this is where things get a little complicated and um, between Representative Kraftharp and I, maybe, and the Department of Revenue, maybe we can, um, the three of us and um, the team on the phone, maybe we can hopefully make sense of this for, for the folks listening. So apologies everybody, but there was multiple pieces of legislation going through in 2019 at the same time that the legislation passed um, to create the set system um, and that the legislation that created the set system was um, Senate Bill 6, right? Let me see my notes here. And um, at the same time, there was legislation that was not through the task force, but was legislation that was um, sponsored by Representative Kraft Barb which was House Bill 1240 um, that was really meant to direct the department and the state to comply with the Wayfair decision. Um, and this is all very complicated stuff. Um, and in the 1240 legislation, there was a threshold put in the legislation that allows our smallest businesses um, that might pertain to many of the folks listening to stay at what we call um, taxes in common or origin sourcing um, so that you don't have to comply with destination sourcing for in-state businesses, meaning um, but until that 90-day trigger is hit. So when the Department of Revenue requires businesses to do the registration in the set system, it's ultimately going to require those businesses to also comply with the destination sourcing. So that is the piece as I recall, um, and anybody who's either listening or also on the panel can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't have a copy of the legislation in front of me, but that's as I recall is that the trigger is really around requiring our businesses to also go to that destination sourcing. Um, Jenna, you are correct on that. Um, I was just reading up on the 1240 bill and we are requiring businesses, businesses to comply. So thank you for clarifying that and you are on point with that. Yeah, so if you are a small business listening and you are currently only remitting via you know revenue online or the set system for your taxes in common or origin sourcing when the department issues that trigger you're going to be required to do destination sourcing 
And that's one of the major reasons that we all, um, everybody on this call, has been working so hard to get the SUS system in place um, and get the home rules to participate because that's ultimately what's gonna make this system work and be successful and make it easy for all of our businesses to comply with, with um, submitting and remitting their sales and use tax. It, it's two separate things. Mm -hmm. So the um, because Wayfair passed, um, which was the um, out-of-state sales tax collection, the department passed destination sourcing because of the commerce clause um, that you can't, you know, require one thing from one people, another thing from the other. And so the department said, from now on, everybody has to collect sales tax from your destination where it's being sent to rather than the origin of where you are. Um, this created a lot of complications for very small businesses, like under 100,000. So, because they were struggling with, how do we know what the destination sales tax rates are? I mean, how are we to know that? We're just a small little business. So, what we did in 1240 is, um, as you can see from looking at the database, is that um, we said, wow, this is a great resource for small businesses to be able to look up that destination sourcing sales tax. So we said until um, the sales tax system gets going, until it's developed, and unfortunately I did not define launch, and that was, turns out that that was a mistake and we probably should have done that, um, that uh, uh, small, small businesses could do origin sourcing. But we gave a 90 day criteria in order to give the state the ability to be able to work with Good Business Colorado and the chambers and everything else to notify the small businesses that they had to switch over. So um, because the system is in place, um, my thought is that small businesses should be switching over and the state should have notified everybody. Um, but I think that we'll have a conversation with DOR around um, the intents and when we'll be moving on that. That's really helpful. Thank you so much, Representative Kraftharp, Jen, uh, Department of Revenue folks. It's, it is a complicated area and I think that's why we really wanted to host this conversation so that folks um, could get some clarity. So, I mean, it sounds like the big takeaway is the move is going to be for everyone to be on sets once that is triggered. Um, that trigger hasn't happened yet, but it is coming. Um, now, so at this point, folks can use the other um, mechanism, but the goal is for everybody to transition to sets, including small businesses. That is the goal, but that is, but there is no forcing people to do that. Yeah. yeah. Right. The compliance piece is around the origin and the destination mm -hmm. sourcing. Gotcha. But yeah. But ideally, all businesses will want to do this mm -hmm. because it's so convenient and it's so cool. I mean, I think it's just really cool when you're looking at it. Um, businesses will want to because it will really help them um, be more efficient in their work. Ideally, the home rules will want to do it because it will really streamline their efforts. So this is a motivational system. It's not a compliance system. Thank you. That's... That is a really important perspective and feedback. And I will say we've gotten a couple great comments in the chat box of folks really affirming that, just that the TTR system is outstanding. Um, great efforts and work by all should be a vast improvement over the current system. Um, so there is some positive feedback coming from folks who have already started using it and feel like it is making their lives a lot easier, which is always the intended goal. So I think we have answered all the questions at this point. Um, do folks have any, do our panelists have any sort of last comments or if anybody has a, a last minute question? Um, ah, so another question, another couple comments. Um, folks are wanting to know if the launch, if they can anticipate the launch uh, before the end of this year. Uh, that is definitely our goal. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we're still trying to determine that based on home rule participation. So uh, definitely that's our goal. Um, another question, are there um, 
sort of technical assistance provisions being provided in Spanish or any other languages for business owners that English might not be their first language? Right now, um, as far as I know, um, it's only being provided in English. Uh, there might be some options in the future, but right now that's our only option. And folks are asking, will they receive notic notification directly from the state? We plan to do um, a public uh, announcement once we are ready to, to make that decision and that step. So definitely there will be something coming down the pipeline. Okay, great. Um, over at Good Business Colorado, we do send out a, a monthly newsletter, eBlast. Um, so we try to, to communicate with our folks about these types of things as well. Um, so I think the small business community, um, the chambers, different coalition partners can really help share that information. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up. Um, so there is kind of follow up questions about compliance with language being a barrier. So I, I do want to voice that as something that uh, that we're hearing. So I do hope the department is able to explore technical assistance provision for um, for people who English isn't their first language. Um, so there are questions about compliance issues. So that's an issue we, we would really like to stay in touch about as well. Okay. Thanks. Any other um, final questions or feedback? I think we covered a lot of ground. So thank you all for this conversation. Um, we really appreciate panelists, all of your time, all of the really hard work that's gone into advocating for this system, uh, building this system, and now educating um, our small businesses about how to best use it. And we will continue to work with our co-sponsoring organizations, um, all of you all, to make sure that we're getting information out to folks who need it the most. I uh, just want to really quickly remind folks when you log off, you should get a survey about this webinar. Feel free to share any feedback, um, also any other training topics that you could use some assistance with. And then sort of speaking of taxes, I just want to mention that we are hosting a, a virtual question and answer discussion session on a ballot measure that Colorado voters will be deciding on whether or not to repeal the Gallagher Amendment. So if you're needing help kind of navigating that, we're going to have um, a proponent, an opponent, and just some discussion on that one. That's October 6th, and you can register by clicking on events on the Good Business Colorado website. So thank you again to all of our panelists. I really, really appreciate all your time and energy and to everyone who shared your feedback and questions. And I assure you that we will um, we will stay in touch about this issue. So take care and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Karen and the Good yeah. Business Colorado team. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.